Welcome to Digital Asset News, like a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some bullish news, but some sad news. First up, Fidelity CEO calls company's Bitcoin custody business incredibly successful. And this is amazing because Fidelity was one of the first ones to really get into cryptocurrency and they are reaping the rewards also. Let's take a trip down memory lane real quick and take a look at the best asset class returns over the last 10 years, how did gold do? How did commodities do? How did the stock market do? We'll take a look at that real quick. On top of Cardano initiating a hard fork to introduce token locking, why this is a bigger deal than most people think. And finally, Ledger Wallet customers data leak loses life savings. And this is just gonna be a PSA of what not to do. So we'll go over all that, but just remember, today is the first day of the 12 days of Christmas. So congratulations, we are here and it's time to give away some free swag, some good stuff. So today is the 14th, December 14th. Looks like it is about 12.30 uh, p.m. El Paso, Texas time. And we're giving away uh, four stone books. Well, we've already done uh, one video for the Shield Folio stone book. If you don't know, this is exactly what it is, pretty awesome. You're able to put all your passwords and your seed phrases and everything else. It's water and tear resistant, and it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. I got a couple of them. They're awesome. And uh, I love them. So I thought, why don't I just reach out to uh, Shield Folio and see if they can give us some free stuff, and they sure did. So we did a video today, and it talked about, it was all about Band. And Band had joined up with an organization called the uh, Open API. And what it does is it enables blockchains to leverage API, and they've got a pretty good good amount of heavy hitters on that team, uh, Microsoft, IBM, Google, as well as eBay. And Band was the first cryptocurrency to actually join that, which I thought was pretty amazing, so we talked about it today. However, uh, there's a couple of things. First of all, I made mention that Band was, it was listed on Coinbase Pro, but it wasn't on Coinbase Regular, and that was incorrect. Apparently it is on Coinbase uh, Regular. I actually looked through Coinbase, and uh, since I don't use it <laughs> like at all, uh, I just couldn't find it. So it is on Coinbase, so that is one thing. Um, they actually sent me an email talking about uh, come on over and you know earn some free band by watching these free videos. I just didn't do it. And I talked about you can get on Voyager. So now you know, you can get on Coinbase or Voyager, whichever, if you want to pay a lot of fees or a little bit of fees, it's up to you. But in this video, I talked about Shield Folio when we're doing a, a giveaway. So what we're gonna do right now is just draw those names. So first one I see, I think this is funny. First I said, only mention Shield Folio. And Patrick May says Cornholio, which is pretty funny. And then he says down here, Shield Folio. So I'm gonna give one to Patrick May, that was pretty funny. And then I'm just gonna randomly swing down, stop, and uh, Marius C. Nitu. So for today's video, if you're looking to grab one of these uh, other two shield folios that we'll be giving away just comment below and just say shield folio don't say anything else just shield folio s-h-i-e-l-d-f-o-l-i-o and we'll draw two more in the next video all right let's jump into today's uh market so it's the 14th of december and what do we got roughly the same thing we had yesterday Nothing big. Bitcoin's at 19.1. Ethereum's at 584. Down a little bit. XRP's down. XRP is. I, I thought this would actually fall a lot more after that uh, snapshot of the uh, for Spark, but hey, only down four and a half percent. Watch out. Tether, nobody cares. Litecoin is down a percent. Chainlink, everything's down. Let's just be honest. What's that Binance coin? So good for them. Six percent for Monero. Hey, good job, Monero. Tezos, OKB. That's about it. So. That's not too bad. Now let's take a look at what it would be if you just would have invested into Bitcoin. Would you beat Bitcoin? Well, not so much. Uh, on Ethereum, you'd be down a percentage. XRP, you'd be down four. Chainlink, one. You'd be up uh, half a percent for Cardano. That's interesting. Uh, you'd be up 2.6 for Binance. 6% for Monero. What else? What else? Eh, not really much. So all synthetic seven percent congratulations so yeah it's just one of those things like uh, a lot of times if you just put in a bitcoin you do pretty well but again there are those other uh low cappers where you could you know put a little bit of money into it make a uh, fantastic uh gains but uh that's just not my style maybe that's you all right let's jump into today's top stories so this one was pretty cool when we look at bitcoin in the beginning you have to understand that in 2010 11 12 people thought you were an idiot for messing around with any kind of internet money it was just a fool's errand and now we've got some of the biggest institutions in the world going you know what it's pretty looks like it's pretty valuable so uh not to take anything away so let's just get into it so fidelity ceo calls company's bitcoin custody custody business incredibly successful and she, there's a little bit of a wrinkle here and I, and I totally agree with what she's saying here so this is uh abigail johnson she's the ceo of 3.3 trillion mutual fund giant 
Fidelity. She claimed that her company's custody business around Bitcoin has been huge, actually. So she states this. Right now, our custody business around Bitcoin has been incredibly successful. We've got a tremendous pipeline and it's been really exciting to watch. And what she says here was interesting and she's right. She goes, I didn't expect us to actually do really well with Bitcoin, especially for custody, because the whole ethos behind it was be your own bank. You know, Bitcoin people in the very beginning, it was all, you know, like I said, like libertarians and anarchists. And it was all about being your own bank and, and institutions down institutions and blah, blah, blah. So when she heard about this in the beginning, she's like, why would they have us cuss? That makes no sense. <laughs> and here we are. So that's a little bit of a food for thought. Anyhow, this is why we need institutions. And it's just right here. Uh, a lack of world-class third-party custodians has been a major pain point for Bitcoin since hedge funds and other institutional participants are in dire need of protecting their holdings. You have to understand, uh, institutions aren't like us. They can't just, you know, you know, pick up the phone or go on the internet and just buy a couple billion dollars worth of uh, Bitcoin and put it on their ledger. It just it doesn't work like that. They've got their boss on top of their boss on top of their boss. And they've also got regulations and they can't hold these things. So what do we do? Well, we need a custodial service and that's where Fidelity came in. That's where a lot of these places go. That's why Grayscale is so huge because the institution's like, hey, we need someone to, to custody of it. They're like, yeah, we'll do that for you, but it's going to be like a 20% premium. <laughs> no problem. Here you go, Pete. And then off they go. So it's just one of those things where it's like it has to be done like that right now. Anyhow, Fidelity fully rolled out its own solution in late 2019. And in, in the October interview with the Financial Times, uh, she took a – and this is why I like this lady's style show. So Johnson here took a not-so-veiled swipe at Coinbase custody, claiming that most people eh, never heard of it. Now, whether that's a swipe or just reality, it is what it is. Uh, maybe people don't really know too much about uh, Coinbase custody service, and that's why they go into you know a big, huge place like Fidelity with 3.3 trillion assets under management. And I can totally see why institutions will uh, trust them over the new startup, and that uh, only makes sense. So again, I think it's interesting that it took, first of all, it took this long to get where we are with institutions, but I'm just glad we're here, which leads me to my next point. If we take a look at the 10 year history, this is a great tweet that was sent out by Charlie Baleo. I don't know who he is, but did a lot of work, so thanks, Charlie. And it just goes over the different asset classes over the last 10 years. Now we know Bitcoin has done tremendously well compared to everything else, but I mean, how well has it done? Well, if you take a look, this is insane gains. Uh, 2011, if you would have gotten in super early, which, I mean, tip of the hat if you did, you're up 1473 for that year, 186 for that year, 5507. But in 2014, you were down 58%. And you know why you were down? Because it was right after the halving. And the same thing happened in 2017. You were up massive, but you took a huge hit, myself included, after that halving. And now you're up two years. So if you just follow the pattern, you're going to be up big time next year and the year after, maybe, or it's going to be quite a bit of a dump because look, having dump, having dump. Actually, 2016 was the having <laughs> all time high dump. So having all time high dump. So 20, having 21, all time high 2022 dump. See where I'm going? That's what you need to pay attention about. But I just thought it was interesting. Just take a look about like how it actually had done. Actually, Nasdaq did pretty darn good, right? The Nasdaq 100, you're up 512 percent for for a decade. Hey, not too bad. I mean, it's not, you know, these crazy gains that you get with Bitcoin, but hey, not too shabby, really. And then uh, real estate investment trusts, uh, where they, you know, people just put money into uh, different real estate projects and they kind of pool up their money and they get it. They're actually up pretty good, 124 percent over uh, over 10 years. That's awesome. Treasuries, eh, not too bad. I don't think they're going to do that again. Uh, bonds, I don't think that's going to happen. But uh, here's a good one. Gold. And there's a lot of gold bugs out there. I own gold. I think gold's a good hedge. But gold's not here to make you money. Gold is, I'm going to say it again. Gold is not here to make you money. Gold is the thousand year old currency that is there to save you when there is a huge collapse and when it goes down to like a dystopian future after nuclear holocaust and mutants run the world. That's I think where gold saves you and it's a nice pretty shiny metal but uh you have to understand when when these gold bugs are just ramming it on your throat that you gotta have gold you gotta have gold you gotta have gold the reason why they're doing that is because they got a lot of gold and that's really what it comes down to now i am no different i am biased as well i got a lot of bitcoin i mean i have a lot of bitcoin i have 
uh, I have enough, we'll just say. I've been, I've been accumulating since 2017. We'll just say that, which I don't have hundreds, okay? But I am biased and I talk about Bitcoin. However, I also have stocks. I also have gold and I also have silver. So I just don't have a lot of them. But one thing that really ticks me off is these gold bugs who say you can only have gold and you really shouldn't get anything else. And, and Bitcoin is just ridiculous. I'm like, how? You're not dumb. You're not dumb. You aren't dumb and they aren't dumb. What they're trying to do is manipulate you to get into, to, into what they want you to do so you can just roll up their, you know, their payroll. So don't fall for that. Uh, you need to take a look right here. Gold is down one, two, three, four, 40% of the time. Uh, four to 10 times they're down. So that's a bummer. But if you had hold it for 10 years, you'd be up 20%. Ooh, 20%. I call that a Thursday. Who cares? And that's really it. I mean, I just thought it was a very interesting one. I'm, I'm going to save this on my Twitter account and uh, I'll pin it up there. You can have it for a long time. And I'll actually link this in the description so you can show your family on uh, Christmas, Christmas Day, <laughs> Christmas holiday. And that's it for that. Let's move on. Next up, Cardano initiates hard fork to introduce token locking. And I got to tell you, I almost fell asleep when I read this article. That's so boring. But uh, it's it's it'll get interesting and I'll break it down. So for the Cardano token locking, this actually uh, will now take place on the 16th of December. And I'm like, great, who cares? But I'm forcing myself to get into Cardano. I'm actually need to know more about it. I mean, I know it's going to be a great project. I think Charles Hoskins is a very smart guy. He's got a lot of people around him that are very smart. It's looking to do great things. Uh, but the problem with Cardano for me I think for a lot of people is that they're so meticulous and actually that, that that's a good thing you want that to happen you don't want to be at like some crazy d5 project where like invest in a sushi and it all just goes away you're like damn it i just lost everything so with cardano they are doing the right thing and, and doing it proper that's why we actually started our own cardano staking pool and uh i i don't have the technic the technicalities but i have a, a lot of people around me that do and thank thankful we're all pooling our resources and doing this and uh, right now we're at uh, looking at 7.5 uh, million for delegation so thanks everybody really appreciate it if you don't know once you hit 63 million it's saturated and your uh, rewards actually go down which is something that will look something like this when you have like a, a pool that has like 164, I mean, the max is 63 million. So they're just losing rewards left and right. If you want to join the pool, uh, there's very easy instructions. There's a link in the description. It looks just like this. When you click on that, it'll take you to our official page. and Just click on wallets. It'll scroll you down. And then just a little bit down farther, there's a 13-minute video which talks about, you know, what we do and everything else. So go ahead and check, take a look at that. This is why it's important to really do your research. So take a look at this. So this update uh, is significant as it will prepare the platform for smart contracts and the creation of assets besides ADA that can be run on Cardano. It will also provide an important piece of Voltaire governance functionality supporting a voting mechanism. So right there, this hard fork, which I was falling asleep <laughs> in this article, uh, I, I get down to the juicy beats. I'm like, that's important. That's huge. That's amazing that they can actually pull this off, you know, in tandem. And it's like, like they've been they've been running so fast. I mean, they had uh, the mainnet launch. Now they're getting into Gogan. Now they got everything with their, uh, their launch of this hard fork. Uh, there's going to be multi assets. I mean, these guys are doing it all, and they're doing it under the radar. I mean, how many people have you heard talk about this? I don't hear anything about this. I have to actually dig and dig and dig. So maybe Cardano is really that sleeping giant, but only time will tell. Anyhow, to finish up, once token locking is running on the mainnet, Cardano Ledger, subsequent hard forks will introduce multi-asset and other smart contract capabilities on top of what Charles has talked about, which is he is dead set on getting into DeFi. He thinks DeFi is the future of Cardano, and uh, I for one am excited. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our last piece. And last up, this is a PSA because nothing ticks me off more than scammers. So Ledger Wallet customer data leak uh, leads to a loss of life savings. And I have to tell you, I'm pretty disappointed in Ledger, what they're doing, uh, what they're not doing. And I'll get that in a second. So if let's just do a little history, okay? On July 29th, uh, hackers compromised about 1 million email addresses. So that's why you're going to get a bunch of emails saying, hey, uh, you need to update your ledger and blah, 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 and follow this link and give us your passphrases. It's all a scam. It's always a scam. Just treat everything that you ever see and hear as a scam. And you'll be a much happier person. So if you get a text message or an email or you see something on Twitter or the internet, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to ledger.com. This is the official website. And you're going to go there and you're going to click on support and you're going to click on contact us and you're going to send them an email 
just by clicking on one of these drop-down boxes. And you're gonna say, hey, I got this da-da-da. Is this legit? And they're gonna tell you no. Uh, if, you've, <laughs> if you don't wanna waste your time, just don't ever do anything, that, any kind of emails, unless you contact Ledger directly. The same thing goes with Coinbase, the same thing goes with Gemini, the same thing goes with any other business that you can possibly think of. If you do that and go to the direct source, you'll be a much happier person. If you can't verify it, you don't do it, period. And that's it. That's really all that really comes down to. But um, I can't blame you if you've fallen victim to a scam. Everybody's been there. It just happens. And we always think that we're too smart. Ah, I'm too smart for that. I'm too smart for that. Do you know how many emails I get on a weekly basis that says, I, I thought I was too smart for that? <laughs> it happens a lot and it sucks. I hate getting them. So I'm just trying to make sure that you don't fall victim to that. So on top of the million people with the email address, um, the hack, Around almost 10,000 customers had other information exposed, including names, shipping addresses, and phone numbers. That's why people will get text messages from Ledger, supposedly Ledger, and say, hey, we need you to update your information. Just click right here and we'll do blah, blah, blah. And it's a scam. So this was somebody by the name of Mills. Brad Mills, I guess he got a lot of Twitter followers. And he says exactly what I think. He says, hey, Ledger, you need to keep sending phishing warnings to all of your customers. You need to keep sending warnings to all your customers. I, I had to say it twice because it makes a lot of sense. People are losing their savings because of the hack. Get in front of it. Continually send out purposeful emails to your customers just about the hack. Be a good, do better. And when he talks about just about the hack, what he's saying is you'll get emails and they'll be like three or four subjects, right? Like, hey, we got this new promotion. Hey, buy this X. And hey, watch out for this phishing attack. And hey, here's a cute picture of my dog. Or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. The, the, the whole thing is, is like this. If you, if you can just be the company that says, hey, we're going to send out an email every day, every two days, every three days to remind people continuously that they do not or should not fall victim to these phishing attacks, here's the watch out for, you will greatly reduce the amount of people that get screwed out of their money because of your arrogance and your inability to keep the data safe. Now, I like Ledger. I have promoted their products. I still believe in their products, but I do not believe in what they're doing right here. They need to be better and do better things. And I'll say it, that's, I'll call a spade a spade, that's what it is. So in sales, you have to see something seven to 10 times before you buy it. You have to be aware of what's going on around you. So you have to tell people 10, 20, 30 times. I don't care if you have to send out an email every day and people are like, forget it, unsubscribe, I got it. Doesn't matter, at least you saved everybody losing all their money. And here's a prime example. So this is from a user. My ledger wall got emptied after I followed the instructions in the phishing email thinking it was a real ledger. I can't believe I fell for it, I'm done with crypto. And that's the kind of thing that I'm worried about. 2021 is gonna be huge and all these scammers are gonna come in, they're gonna screw people out of their money and one person tells 10, 10 tells 100, 100 tells 10,000. See where I'm going? We can't have that. That's why we got to make sure that we that we get people to know what's going on. So some people will tell me, like, I'm going to go off on a ramp, sorry. Some people will tell me, other YouTubers, they, they shut their ads off because they don't want to expose people to scams. Well, guess what? Every other YouTuber leaves their, their ads on. So what, am I going to coddle you and treat you like a child? Because, you know, like all these scams that are coming about? No, I need to have you come to this channel. I need you to have to be exposed to these scams and then actually tell you what's going on. Because if I don't do it, guess what? No one else is going to do it. How many people talk about scams out there? Nobody. Very, 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 very few. So if you come onto this one and to my channel and in every single video on the very top, I say, hey, watch out for these scams. They're going to be phishing. They're going to have these numbers. It's going to be on top of you. So make sure that you don't fall victim to it. At least I'm educating you as opposed to somebody who's like, nope, not going to do it. I'm not going to put it out there. And then you, then you go to some other YouTuber and you're like, well, I didn't know about it because no one talks about it. That's what I'm saying. All right, get off my soapbox. So the last piece here. A good chunk of my Bitcoin has gone through the ledger phishing scam. Seriously, someone I love had access to the seed phrase, got the text warning that our wallet was hacked and enter seed to recover. And they entered the seed and passed phrase in RIP. So somebody, probably the wife, sniffing other, it's like, oh no, I got this email. Don't worry, I'll, I'll help you, Roger. And then here we go. And then this was the quote of the day. Man, I used to love Ledger, but after all my info leaked, I received text and messages to my phone saying my Bitcoin is being transferred and email saying reset your password, prove your identity. It was very convincing and I feel if it were not for the negligence of Ledger leaking all the info, I would have never been put in the situation to be fished for 5k on one of my devices. And that's a problem. So just so you know, something comes up, everything's a scam, go to the official site, you'll be much happier.
All right, let me check my blood pressure. I think I'll be okay. Well, thanks for sticking with me to the end. I really appreciate it. If you uh, like those types of videos, there'll be two more that's gonna pop up on your uh, left and right. I'm not sure I'll let YouTube do its magic. And that's it for today. I know it's a long, long one. I, I apologize, but uh, some of these things have to be said, and that's just how it is. So uh, thanks again. Really appreciate it. See you on the next one. Bye.